My name is uh, Sławomir Jasek, and here is my colleague <laughs> Jakub. Uh, we are both uh, pen testers at Securing. Uh, we do security assessments of various software components, applications, uh, systems, networks, and so on. Among them, uh, many proprietary uh, protocols and solutions. Uh, after almost 10 years of dealing with the subject, I must ad admit that I still find the job really absorbing. Uh, that's uh, really difficult to explain, but uh, you just have to feel, you just have to feel the, the emotions when you break into the system, <laughs> finally. Uh, we would like to share a little bit of the, that experience with you. Okay. So, take a look at our agenda. We're going to show you some uh, case studies from real-life industrial propri proprietary network protocols. So you can see they are everywhere in whole automation. Uh, I recently did a big research on pool printing solutions, uh, remote desktop software, and uh, forex trading software. Uh, and we'll also show you, show you uh, cheat sheets for uh, owners, for deployers, architects, and developers, uh, as well as testers, penetration testers of these solutions. Uh, and we'll also show you how to really hack it. So, how many of you are pen testers? Hands up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you ever encountered a proprietary network protocol? Any of you? If not, you will. Uh, yeah, because they are uh, they're almost everywhere. So, uh, do, do you ever feel this, uh, this uh, situation when you, you really know that there are going to be some vulnerabilities inside uh, in this software, but you cannot take out the, the outer layer, the layer of proprietary network protocol, because you don't have the specification, uh, because you cannot decompile the client, uh, or you just don't know where to put your fingers in, uh, maybe to watch the raw packets on a cable, so the network reverse engineering. Uh, so let's try to do this. Okay. Um. So our first example uh, is a mobile application uh, to remotely control your home, uh, uh, your, your home, uh, for example, to take, uh, take, take to turn off something or turn on. Uh, the, the application uh, works uh, in connection with uh, an appliance. Uh, you get an appliance from the vendor. Uh, you install it uh, in your uh, home automation network and. Uh, uh, the other plug uh, to, to your router um, and uh, connect it directly uh, from the internet uh, by port forwarding. Uh, and uh, you set the password as an access control. So uh, let's have a look at uh, a few packets. Uh, how does it work? Uh, uh, the protocol works something like that. So the client sends a, a few such packets. Um, the server responds with something like that. Uh, then the client sends something similar again, and uh, the server responds with uh, something similar again, and uh, so on and so on. <laughs> uh, so, uh, does anybody see anything uh, particularly interesting in that packet? Uh, anything uh, suspect? What could be uh, uh, some kind of hole in security? Uh, We've got some gadgets, so uh, if you can help me, I can give you some a cap, for example, with SQL injection. Uh, uh, no, it's not XR, XR encryption. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, as, as a pen tester, uh, you, ha you can alter some kind of, um, some kind of uh, for example, uh, values, uh, which are then sent through the wire. So uh, we have uh, altered the password. Uh, so if we change the password, uh, the packets look like this. Uh, the red one is the one that is sent from the client to the server, and uh, the green is the response from the server. So uh, this is password number one, uh, this is password number two, and this is password number three. Uh, does anybody see anything? <laughs> well, uh, 
Yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> you can get this one. <laughs> okay, you can get the free beer <laughs> after that. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> okay, thanks. So uh, it turned out uh, that this is the password encoded. Uh, I mean, uh, it's just uh, um, MD5 of the password, not XOR, but you were close. Uh, uh, of the first 10 bytes of the password, and this is actually uh, what is sent to the uh, internal uh, home automation protocol. Uh, and uh, the, the green, uh, the red, one, sorry, <laughs> the blue one uh, is the things uh, returned by the appliance uh, to, the, uh, to, to the mobile application. So there we have, for example, temperature or status of something and so on. Uh, does anybody know um, what's wrong with the protocol? Sorry? Good. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear. <laughs> replay. Replay. replay uh, replay. Yes, of course. We can do Good. the replay attack. Uh, that's one of the problems because the password is always uh, the same and it's uh, enclosed uh, in each packet. So we don't really need to know. Uh, don't, don't really need to know the clear text password. <laughs> you can get <laughs> a cap. Uh, so, uh, of course, we can, we can also do sniffing of the protocol because uh, we can see that there is a clear text uh, status of that. Um, of course, we can do man in the middle, do the replay, uh, I mean, connect directly to the appliance. Uh, the recommendation for that uh, was to put it in SSL. So, uh, after a few months, uh, the vendor did uh, the SSL support. It was a little bit of a problem to uh, implement it because they had to uh, deploy it at the same time on the appliances and uh, mobile uh, clients uh, for, uh, for each customer. And uh, at the end, they made something like that. <laughs> Does anybody see anything wrong with this piece of code? <laughs> No. <laughs> no, do it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you are out of Anybody context. else? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, do we have any mobile application developer? <laughs> yeah. They all do that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, sorry? There is nothing wrong here. <laughs> yes, exactly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, they created empty trust store, trust manager, and they then they didn't uh, check any certificate. They trust all the certificates. Uh, so uh, as you can see, we can uh, we can still do, do the man in the middle attack. Uh, well, that's very common in mobile applications. <laughs> so we saw it even in banking applications. Uh, Okay, uh, well, there's a little bit uh, of uh, interesting side effects uh, because uh, the vendor decided uh, to sell the appliance for a big amount of money uh, and give away for free the mobile applications uh, on Google Plus, uh, for example, or Google Play Store, etc. Et so uh, it turned out that uh, I can simulate uh, this very expensive appliance with a single line of code. Uh, just uh, on my Raspberry Pi over here. Uh, so I just simply listen on uh, a TCP port, uh, read just the five bytes, uh, cut off the password. The password is not, not necessary for me. Uh, the interesting part is the green one for me. And I then directly uh, send it uh, through TTL converter to my home automation uh, network, network. So it works in my home. <laughs> well, I had to a little bit uh, tinker it for the SSL version, uh, generate my own self-signed certificate <laughs> because application works with that. Uh, okay. Okay, so I mentioned you before that we did a big research on pool printing solutions. So first I will try to explain you what it is. Uh, so in normal situation, a user will just print the files directly to the printer. But in this case, he sends the file to the server, uh, it's, uh, it's in the print queue. Uh, then the user uh, goes to the printer and at the printer interface, he authenticates either by swiping his card or typing his username. And then the printer sends a communicate to the server on, on, this, on that line uh, to release the print queue and collect the prints from the server. Uh, so why we, did we decide to hack pool printing solutions? 
mainly because they're widely used. They're used in banks, in financial institutions, in big corporations, because they, hand, they all handle a lot of confidential data, uh, such as contracts, payrolls, director documents, and so on. And it's getting really, really popular. It's not only in top fortune companies, but also mid-sized and small businesses, mainly because uh, this is really saving money. Uh, so uh, let's make a quick threat modeling, uh, like QRISC for pool printing solutions. Any ideas? Exactly. So this, these are the print queues. Uh, so I would say. Sorry. <laughs> 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 so. So the first one is actually sniffing the documents on the line between the server and the printer, getting to the other print queues. So we would not like to have subordinate employees getting to the director print queue. Any other? Well, OK. It's, it's, it's included in the sniffing, but maybe some more. Changing what, sorry? Good, but actually it's just like printing the other queues. OK, so tampering the accountability, printing at others' expense. We'd not like to have uh, people printing books uh, in expense of, of, uh, of their supervisors, let's say. And of course, stealing users' data. Uh, so not like to have user data stolen. Uh, so the attack vectors for this uh, flow diagram is we'd like to have uh, sniffing and perform man in the middle attack on the line between the server and the printer. Uh, of course, uh, we'd like to access their other print queues. Most, uh, in most solutions, here we've got some proprietary network protocol. At the, user, at the printer interface, we'd like to have some authorization bypass. And of course, there are some sol situations and solutions where the uh, proprietary protocol is on the line between the server and the user. Uh, so we'd like to access uh, steal users' data. And if there are any web interfaces, we'd like to uh, hack, the, for example, the administrative interface. Uh, so let's move to the case study number one, pool printing. Uh, the vendor of this solution uh, writes on his website that with its roots in education and the full understanding that college kids like to hack, our development processes continually focus on security. So does it sound like a challenge for you? For me, it does. And secure print release can integrate card swipe user authentication at devices, ensuring jobs are only printed when the collecting user is present. So uh, in this research, we'll try to challenge, challenge these, uh, these claims, these vendor claims. So let's take a look on the binary protocol. It was between the server and the printer. Uh, actually, let's omit the encryption layer, but le let's focus on this binary protocol. So first, the server sends some hello communicate. That's OK. Uh, the printer sends the username of the user that authenticated uh, at the printer, uh, either by swiping card or, or typing his username. Uh, the server sends the token. Uh, the printer responds with a hash. This, this was a one-time token. The printer responds with a hash of a password plus token, uh, and then the server validates it. Uh, after this, the printer uh, sends the, the, the inside communication, like, for example, release, release the print queue, or uh, I've just copied 100 pages, charge me. So uh, what would you say? Uh, where would you look for vulnerabilities here? Weak passwords. Weak passwords. Good idea, actually, no. <laughs> Replaying the password doesn't work as this is one-time token. This is a challenge response solution. Yeah, of course it could, but it didn't. Okay, good, but... Let's assume the challenge okay. response is okay. <laughs> so, actually, yeah. That's, that's a good idea. Give him something. Uh, uh, <laughs> so we tested, we tested this <laughs> authentication <laughs> process, and there were no, vulnerab no vulnerabilities there. The, the hash algorithm was OK, and, and no, no other attacks. But let's focus on this, these other two communicates. So we released my print queue, and I just copied 100 pages. Uh, this is Wireshark capture from this traffic. This is already after authentication. Uh, the blue ones are from the server. So. Uh, the server sent some uh, user permissions. Uh, actually, there were some vulnerabilities here, but, but it's not the point. The point is that the printer sends uh, a communicate, which is begin device transaction, 
for guest XYZ. The guest XYZ was the username. Uh, so, what would you do? Exactly, change this guest XYZ to the other user. And that's what we did, and that's what worked. Uh, so, actually, this communicate release my print queue was not release my print queue, but release print queue for user. I typed, and not just copied 100 pages, but charge user guest XYZ for copying 100 pages. Brilliant. <laughs> OK, so what were uh, the consequences of this attack? Uh, of course, sniffing, done. Print queues, done. We could tamper the accountability. And as it turned out, we were able to uh, still use this data because the server responded with it. Uh, so all key risks were broken. Uh, we then tried to uh, notify the vendor, of course. So I would like to explain our research process. So first, we contacted the vendor. Uh, we asked him for uh, software, we said that we just want to hack your software. <laughs> so uh, he gave us access to the knowledge base at support service. That was, that was good. That was actually amazing. That is not what happens normally. Uh, and as well as all versions of software. And when we sent him the vulnerability report, he responded in a few hours and released the patch for his software in a few days. And in, in our communication, he was really, really happy to be pen tested. So this is the type of vendor that we would like to cooperate with. Uh, OK, your turn. <laughs> uh, OK, as another example, we have a uh, remote desktop protocol. Uh, it's some kind of um, additional layer on the X windows, adding encryption, compression, access control, and so on. Uh, it's used mainly um, for graphical mainframe access uh, for critical business operations, uh, which must be properly secured. For example, it's used in uh, banking industry for uh, forex trading, uh, uh, forex trading uh, operations. So the money involved are, are really high. Uh, the vendor claims that it has more than 100,000 users around the world. Uh, and it's uh, FIPS certificated. Uh, so it uh, ensures, in compliance with the FIPS, uh, that uh, the uh, data is properly uh, encrypted uh, on the wire and uh, the proper, certific uh, proper certificates and uh, algorithms are used. So uh, let's have a look at the packets again. Uh, this is the first one sent by client to the server. Uh, that's the server response. And uh, what happens next is uh, generally an SSL. Uh, we'll deal with that SSL later, <laughs> but uh, let's focus on the first, on the first two packets. Uh, any ideas how to attack them? Try to replace one with the other. Uh, which one? The first one. one. Uh, well, that didn't work. The server didn't respond to anything. Uh, how about, how about that? If we uh, were a man in the middle and responded from the server to the client, something like that. Uh, it turned out uh, that this was the protocol version, uh, and uh, the previous protocol version did not support SSL. So the client uh, happily uh, changed the communication to clear text. Uh, so uh, a man in the middle uh, who could do that uh, could just impersonate the server, send such packet to the client to get a clear text uh, login uh, and encoded password. And uh, how about the password? <laughs> well, uh, we could do the repeat, just as I show uh, in the previous, uh, previous example, uh, but it was more convenient uh, to get the password uh, in clear text and to use the real client. So uh, we have uh, a look at the password. Uh, of course, we could make uh, any password and uh, look at its uh, encoded version. So uh, this is the password. Uh, it looks uh, in ASCII hex like that. And uh, this is uh, its encoded version. So, any ideas? <laughs> what would you do? Uh, well, <laughs> the first thing you should notice is that, uh, that they are the same length. <laughs> so. It's the XR and the same Yes. <laughs> Could it be?
be the most popular uh, <laughs> encryption method. I mean, crappy encryption. <laughs> uh, well, let's try. Uh, we can make the XOR, uh, and we have the result. Uh, we decode the ASCII hex, and we get the password, <laughs> the company's name of the software. <laughs> so, of course, uh, we can reverse the problem, and we, uh, if we have this password, uh, we can solve it with uh, the encoded version to get the clear text one. Uh, so, uh, let's get back to the SSL problem. Uh, so, uh, basically, in default configuration, uh, the server didn't have any certificate configured, so offered only one cipher suit, anonymous cipher suit. So, uh, in that configuration, client didn't have any possibility to, uh, to check the server's identity. So, man in the middle is obvious here. Uh, and that's the configuration we saw uh, in real life. Uh, but <laughs> let's assume uh, that somebody properly configured the certificates. Uh, and uh, the server sends the certificate and uh, also proper cipher suits. So uh, the client, uh, on the first connection, uh, asks pop-ups uh, a window and asks uh, the end user if the certificate is okay. Well, of course, end user reads the fine MD5 uh, or fingerprint uh, and validates it uh, and clicks okay. So that the following connections are secured. So if somebody tries a man in the middle, there is an alert in end user, and he's, he can see that somebody is tampering the connection. But uh, what can we do about that protocol? <laughs> Any ideas? <laughs> well, uh, the certificate checked. Let's assume the certificate check was OK. I mean, properly configured in a safe environment. Oh, in, uh, uh, in subsequent connections? It was checked, it was compared with the stored version from the, pre, uh, from the first connection. I mean, okay, any ideas? Well, how about, do you remember the first, uh, the first um, configuration? How about if we send something like that to the client? Well, uh, we would expect that, uh, that uh, he alleged that there's something wrong with the connection, but <laughs> he happily accepts it. So uh, it turned out that uh, we can do just a simple protocol downgrade, uh, and the client forgets its certificate and uh, accepts the connection. Uh, we can do the man in the middle uh, in, in, in this example. <laughs> so. Uh, well, this communications with the vendor was not as good as with <laughs> Cuba. Uh, so, uh, after uh, initially setting a um, secure communication channel, uh, well, we didn't know which CEO <laughs> for the first, <laughs> but after that, uh, we have exchanged uh, a few emails, but uh, it turned out that they probably do not plan to solve the, the issue. So according to the, um, to the uh, uh, policy of uh, uh, disclosing uh, in, in a proper way, responsible disclosure, uh, we tried to uh, email them if you have any problem, uh, do you see any, uh, do you need any help? Uh, we would like to publish this. Well, uh, it turned out that they Probably, uh, well, we just felt like that, <laughs> uh, even with SDR. <laughs> uh, so uh, we finally, after a few months, uh, could go for our favorite full disclosure. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, well, the vendor did not react, even after full disclosure. Uh, but uh, a few weeks later, uh, they shut down the full disclosure. <laughs> Sorry, guys, <laughs> we didn't want that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, okay, let's switch to the pool printing solutions uh, and talk about encryption. So, uh, yeah, we like that uh, these vendor claims. So let's take a look on the vendor website. So they say that is a modern printing solution that safeguards document confidentiality. And of course, its user authentication provides airtight security. Doesn't sound good for you. For me, it sounds like a challenge. So, uh, 
some more corporate blabbling from this vendor. Uh, he says that documents are delivered only into the right hands, information is kept confidential, there is no risk, document coll collection is safe anytime and anywhere, and all the integration workflows are kept secure. Uh, so let's take a look on the binary protocol between the server and the printer. Uh, first, some uh, first look on communication. We've seen a uh, TCP protocol on communication on two ports. Uh, there is no clear text and there is no SSL, but some encryption is going on the cable. Uh, we don't know what is it, but it seemed to follow some scheme, and I would like to show you this scheme. So let's take a deeper look on that traffic. Uh, let's make a quick quantitative analysis on this traffic. Uh, so first, free communicates, uh, then a lot of encrypted, uh, encrypted small packets, uh, after that, a huge load of data from the server to the printer. What do you think it is? Documents, Documents yeah, probably. Uh, and then a short response from the printer. <laughs> so, uh, so now the, the, the un full analysis of this protocol. The first communicate from the server to the printer had, uh, was constant and uh, it had uh, 263 bytes. It looked like that. You can see the new server crypt uh, and a lot of null byte padding. So probably crypt, probably some encryption or encryption. Uh, okay, the next, communicate from the printer to the server. Uh, here you can see 96 bytes, some, some uh, start, start communication, then a lot of null byte padding. Uh, let's call it variable x bytes. Now it is uh, 64 bytes, so uh, 512 bits of information. And similarly, uh, a lot of null byte padding we had a possibility to access the administration interface and configure this solution and uh, it offered some modes of encryption. Uh, we could uh, change the asymmetric encryption and symmetric encryption. The asymmetric was uh, between RSA uh, 512 bits, RSA 1K and RSA 2K. So this was uh, in configuration of RSA 500. But what happened when we changed it to uh, RSA 1024 bits? Of course, th this middle part was doubled. So probably, what do you think? Key. Yeah, the public key. Uh, OK. Uh, then the server sent always different 64 bytes. This is some, some uh, start of communication, then 64 bytes. Uh, any ideas? Is it a version number somewhere? No. And yeah. The symmetric key for if it was an SSL, this would be a symmetric, uh. a symmetric uh, key for the for the symmetric encryption. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> but uh, it was good. Okay. So uh, then we found in this huge load of data from the server to the printer, we found many identical 60-byte blocks. Look like that. Okay, now I want to ask you a question. What do you see here? ECB mode of encryption, exactly. Uh, exactly. I, I think we are running out of, <laughs> of the glasses. Okay. So do you remember this, uh, this ECB penguin? So this is a basic Linux penguin bitmap. If you encrypt this with ECB mode of encryption, you get this. It's, it may be the colors are not the same, but it's easily reversible. So the print jobs are the postscript files, which are basically text files. Uh, so. Uh, using them for encryption in, in, in the print jobs, not a good idea. Uh, so for our, uh, for our man in the middle attack, actually this was, uh, this was the moment that Swabek told me, Kuba, get it made. <laughs> so <laughs> challenge accepted. So there are some basic assumptions for our, uh, for our a man in the middle script. Hello, so if this was an SSL, this, this would be a hello certificate, the session key for the symmetric encryption and postscript ECB mode. Um, files. So we did, it took us a long time, but, but I will just send, uh, uh, show you the consequences. So after reverse engineering the protocol, we found hard-coded RSA certificates in the printer uh, embedded software. Uh, so not very good. Completely no truster. In this case, the printer sent uh, its public key, so the sh server should check if this particular printer can co could connect to the server. And there was no truster, just like in the previous example. Uh, we found ECB mode of encryption used for traffic uh, for the print jobs. 
and as well as uh, the same protocol used in the admin interface, in the FIC client that connected to the server for the administration interface. Actually, after taking out this uh, layer of a binary protocol, we could find, find some uh, more vulnerabilities there. So really, really exciting. Uh, consequences, of course, the same. Sniffing, print queues, accountability users, data, everything. Uh, OK, what happened when we notified the vendor? Because this was the most problematic there. Uh, we sent him a clear report, and he responded that many of the devices do not have the CPU power that allows a fast login response and at the same time establish high security level. Really? What the hell? So actually, this is the problem that uh, pool printing solutions uh, vendors face. So they face the problem of a fast login response, not a high security level. But they still, they claim on their website, we have airtight security. Uh, so they also responded that changing ECB to CBC mode of encryption will be more CPU intensive and introducing that may cause a slower performance, uh, which the customers are very reluctant to see implemented. Are you kidding me? On a single threaded processor on the printer, CBC, as for our calculations, it wasn't slower. So uh, basically they could change it. And the uh, last thing, they tried to convince us that this solution was secure because they already tested it in other high security customers. So basically, their penetration testing company, not very good. Your turn. Uh, OK. Um, so now we have another example. Uh, it's uh, a protocol designed uh, especially for um, high frequency, um, for example, for, for high frequency um, various stock or something like that, or forex exchanges. Uh, so uh, they had to design it binary because uh, of, uh, in order to minimi minimize the delays, because uh, they, there had to be almost no delay uh, in the response from the server. The uh, actions had to be taken uh, at once. Uh, so they designed a proprietary protocol uh, in a single TCP uh, uh, TCP port uh, and uh, encrypted it in SSL tunnel. So uh, the SSL encryption was okay. Uh, so we did uh, take it off uh, in order to to see if we can hack the server. So uh, after taking off the the SSL, uh, the packets didn't look very much better. <laughs> uh, so. We started to watch the packets. Uh, maybe you can see anything interesting here. Uh, well, we started to watch, and we watched, and we watched. Uh, well, here seems to be some, some numbers or some letters, at least. It looks like some kind of stock quotation or something like that. Uh, here we have a little bit more, uh, even, of the text. Uh, and here. <laughs> And uh, it actually started to be interesting over there. So uh, let's have a look in, in ASCII mode. Uh, any ideas? What could it be? No. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you will get the freebie. <laughs> uh, OK. Uh, so this was basically a SOAP uh, method invocation uh, encrypted, I mean, encoded in the binary protocol. So uh, now we, uh, there we can see a path on the server, probably. There we can see probably um, a method uh, uh, on the SOAP. Uh, and we have uh, encoded here a response from the server. Uh, so uh, it took a few hours, uh, maybe a days even, <laughs> uh, to uh, uh, probably uh, wrap this uh, uh, this uh, call uh, in uh, the binary protocol, but uh, we finally did it. Uh, it was just a simple bash script uh, in, in in the effect <laughs> in the end. Uh, so we could do uh, we could send a proper packet which uh, called something else on the server. For example, we tried something like that. Uh, well, that. Uh, in the end, it didn't work because uh, the admin interface, uh, uh, this admin interface wasn't configured properly on the server. But uh, after a few hours of brute forcing, 
uh, we were able to call something like that. Uh, so uh, the server responded uh, with uh, such SOAP communicate. Uh, incorrect login. <laughs> well, what did it do? Uh, well, uh, I have <laughs> incorrect login. <laughs> well, that didn't mean that we are not authenticated. That, that, that this response means that uh, uh, we didn't pass the login parameter. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, we added a uh, login parameter and we got the uh, error incorrect password. Uh, we added password parameter to the call, uh, we got incorrect first name, uh, we got we added first name, last name, we got uh, the group with name now doesn't exist. <laughs> so, we added uh, a parameter with group, uh, admin of course, <laughs> well it didn't work, any other ideas? Well, administrator didn't work too. <laughs> uh, root, yes, exactly. We tried the root, and uh, let's see what happened. Uh, the server responded with something like that. <laughs> so uh, that's basically this moment uh, I would like to share with you because this, this is the moment of the glory. <laughs> yeah, we are. We have a special procedure for that in our company, but I can't share with you. <laughs> uh, so, we, uh, of course, we have, it looks like we have created a new user, probably in the root group. Well, we have authenticated on that user, uh, and we are able to manage all the other accounts. Uh, so, well, there were thousands of them, and uh, th this is a system used by uh, really high volume, uh, uh, th there are really high money in that, uh, billions of dollars. <laughs> so uh, I could basically uh, send this one packet uh, from the internet. Uh, I didn't even have to uh, uh, have had the account uh, on that server. It, I could do it anonymously uh, and create an administrative user who can manage all, all, the, all the other users and the data and the money. Uh, so, uh, about the communications with the vendor, uh, they really couldn't understand how the heck did we do it. So, uh, they understood that we uh, have uh, invoked it so, so, somehow, but they were sure that we broke the firewall here, that someone has misconfigured the firewall. Uh, and uh, they couldn't believe that, that we were able to decode the protocol and use it uh, to uh, invoke some, uh, other, uh, some other web services. Uh, so, of course, they had to repair uh, a few things uh, in, their, uh, in their application. Uh, and uh, there were other problems in the backend, for example, uh, to uh, excessive error messages and uh, lack of uh, multi-layer protection. Uh, okay. Okay, now some cheat sheet for owners who deploy this. Uh, these kind of solutions, where are the proprietary network protocols? So uh, first, get it pen tested. Do not fear. Uh, get a good company to pen test it. Uh, you should verify the vendor claims. So uh, you should ask for the secure software development lifecycle, you should uh, ask for procedures, uh, how do they handle incident response, how do they handle, uh, how did they handle the previous bugs. Uh, and if you are developers, uh, security by obscurity doesn't work. So the protocol is not secure just by its secrecy. Uh, so somehow it can be reverse engineered. Uh, First of all, use a proper encryption. If it's possible, avoid to write your own cryptography because uh, mostly you will mess it up. Uh, use non-standards uh, and, and really take care with, with these implementations. Uh, and of course, some basic uh, vulnerability, uh, sorry, basic security uh, cheat sheet. So uh, use input validation, uh, check the access control. If it's possible, uh, use network level access control to uh, to countermeasure the, the man in the middle risk. Uh, if it's possible, use IPsec or VLANs or 802.1x network level access control. 
uh, use many, layer, many layers of security, and of course, the, the, the most, uh, most proper uh, advice, the least privileged principle. So remember about that, and now... Uh, okay, and now the cheat sheet for, for pentesters. Uh, well, uh, we tried many different approaches uh, to hack the protocols, uh, and uh, there is no uh, simple answer for the question how to do that. Because the, the proper answer, will, answer would be that depends. Uh, because you have to bear in mind that uh, for um, pen test, you have usually very limited time. And you have to focus uh, on the, um, on the uh, target uh, so that uh, uh, some parts of that, some approaches uh, are ways to, to nowhere. Uh, and uh, you have to know that you have to cut it off. So, uh, of course, uh, we can try to decompile the client. Uh, sometimes it works, uh, especially if it's Android application which is not obfuscated. Uh, it was the case uh, with the MD5 password uh, for the home automation protocol. Uh, well, we could just uh, decompile the mobile application and we knew that it was MD5. Uh, but sometimes, uh, for example, with remote desktop uh, protocol, uh, it's, it can be really hard <laughs> because you can spend hours and hours looking at the hex rays, but uh, you don't see anything that uh, in fact brings you closer to the understanding of the protocol. Uh, but you can see um, some kind of, uh, in this, uh, for example, in this example with remote desktop, we have seen some kind of distractions. Uh, for example, something like that. Uh, so we knew that uh, the piece of software was probably written by some Paul, uh, probably named Silvek, uh, and he knew the old Polish joke uh, about Stilitz and Russian piano player. Uh, but uh, that, didn't, that didn't bring us to, to nowhere closer <laughs> to understand the protocol. Uh, we just uh, looked at the... At the uh, well, of course, uh, you can uh, look for the manu manual. Uh, so, it's for some clients, uh, you, have, uh, you have an official client or, or you can have even Wireshark plugin, for example, for MQ protocol. Uh, the best av available documentation is, is Wireshark plugin. Uh, you can ask for the doc documentation. Uh, it did work a few times. Uh, uh, social engineering of, uh, for example, uh, service uh, uh, help and so on. Uh, and uh, you can search for the documentation. And yes, we did find uh, uh, internal protocol specification uh, by Google hacking. Simple, uh, simple on, the, on the website uh, the, for the developers of, uh, of that company. Uh, but, uh, well, uh, we have tried, of course, watch the packets. Uh, well, there are various tools to analyze uh, proprietary protocols. Uh, they look very promising when someone presents them uh, on the, uh, <laughs> uh, on a, an interesting, uh, uh, for example, uh, show, uh, and uh, but in fact uh, uh, we didn't uh, find them very helpful uh, because uh, it took a lot of time to understand how it, how it works, uh, how to configure it, and uh, they usually didn't work for our cases. So uh, in ha in fact we just looked at the raw packets uh, and. Uh, just try to spot some, some kind of scheme. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, with, with the help of, of standard, uh, uh, standard uh, command line or, or GUI to tools. Um, and uh, to hack the protocol, we used, uh, in fact, uh, our favorite scripting languages, Python, uh, PHP, or, or even Bash. Uh, so it was, it was just enough. It was. Uh, uh, for, for, for our purposes, it was okay. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I believe you have some interesting questions for us. <laughs> and uh, in the meantime, I will uh, tell you that uh, we are looking for a new, uh, uh, for a new colleagues. Uh, so, please write to us, uh, your CV. 
Oh, and of course, you can talk with us. We are almost, uh, almost uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, at, our at our stand. Uh, so come and talk with us. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask them. <laughs> any questions? No. Well, of course, you can come to see. us and talk about it. <laughs> okay, so thank, thank you very much. Big applause.